Today, we are going to talk about how to fix your marketing funnel. So going into the new year, I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Our ad costs going to get cheaper. Our conversion rates going to drop. Who knows? But when you look, when you think about your funnel, it is something that you can absolutely control. And we're going to talk about how you can fix it because if you fix your funnel, you're going to have higher conversion rates, which hopefully means more revenue for you at the end of the day. So if, if you don't know what a marketing funnel is to back up a little bit, someone visits your website, let's say a homepage. Then they may go and find a product that they like. So then you got the product page. Then they may add it to the cart. So then you got the you know cart page. Then they decide to check out. And if they purchase, then eventually you get a payment page and then a thank you page. That's an example of a funnel. People have to go from step to step to step in order to complete. There could be multiple funnels for one website and a funnel for product pages, service pages. There's literally funnels for all types of websites. The easiest way to figure out what's wrong with your funnel is to look at what are the drop-offs. So in your Google Analytics, you can actually see paths. Where are people going from one page to the next page? What's the drop-off? The bigger the drop-off, typically, those are the pages that have the most issues. Those are the pages that you want to focus on first to improve. And what you can do is you can run qualitative surveys on those pages to try to figure out what objections people have, what issues they have on why they're not converting. If you then take that data, run A-B tests through Google Optimize or any tool you want, and tweak your copy, tweak your images, answer the objections that people had, what you should see over time is you should see the drop-off rates decreasing and more people completing the overall funnel. Now, there's a big mistake that companies make when they try to improve their funnel. They optimize for reducing the drop-off for each rate, and that's their end metric. That shouldn't be your end metric. The real metric that you should track success is conversions. So even if the drop-off decreases, but it doesn't cause more conversions, it doesn't matter. You need actually, yes, you ideally want the drop-off to decrease, but at the same time, the end result of getting more conversions also needs to increase because if you don't see an increase there, your efforts are being wasted. That's why you need an A-B test and also focus on how many conversion points you're getting at the end. Yep. I'm going to use a real life example in, in this case for YouTube. And so our, our the marketing funnel for YouTube, in, in this case, it's actually just more views, right? At the end of the day, it's sure you can talk about click through rate, you can talk about AVD, which is average view duration. But what really matters is, am I getting more views for the video? And so this is a very simple way of fixing a marketing funnel here, because it's just like, you know, are people seeing the video and then are they actually clicking through and are they viewing, right? So very simplified marketing funnel here. And so what we do for marketing school is we run A-B tests on the thumbnail through a tool called TubeBuddy. And TubeBuddy allows us to run A-B tests here. And the beauty of that is that, you know, for example, in some cases, we'll test like an image of Neil and I combined and then like with an image of a Tesla because we're talking about Tesla, right? And then we might show like a just a Tesla, like we'll show the car in one and we'll show maybe the logo in the other one. And then one might perform you know, 2x better or something like that. And then, you know, test gets is significant statistical significance, and then it automatically just switches to that one, right? And so that, that's an example of testing our marketing funnel. I think too many of us, we kind of take things at face value, and then we do one title, one thing, thumbnail, and we're done. But when you take it to the extreme, and you look at like a Mr. Beast, for example, he'll make, he'll make like five or six thumbnails, and you spend like, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars just testing the hell out of this stuff. And that's all to just get more views, get a higher click to rate at the end of the day. Because let's say you're getting 10 million impressions on a video, if you're getting a 10% click-through rate, well, then at the end of the day, you're getting 1 million uh, views, right? If it's 5%, then you're getting 500K. And so th this is like, we're talking high level here, but this also applies to your business, right? And so whether you look at a form, you could be running a type form. Type form does a good job of showing you where drop-off is. Google Analytics also does a does a good job of showing you where drop-off is. And then you just look at the overall conversions at the end of the day. You can use Google Optimize, whatever tools you want. And the final thing I'll say is you want to be testing your messaging too, right? There's a good tool called, a, or it's called a B2B message testing platform. I'm, I'm looking at it right now from Pep, formerly from CXL or Conversion XL. So you can use that. And then there are B2B messaging testing platform. And you can also read April Dunford's book. It's called Obviously Awesome. And she's a master at messaging. So if you want to test, oftentimes messaging is going to help you go a long way. That's a first place to start. And the last thing that we have from our end is Eric mentioned type form. Again, the reason I want to emphasize this is you're not going to really improve your funnel 
if you don't know what objections people have. And you're not going to get that by just looking at the numbers like on Google Analytics. Yes, Google Analytics will tell you what pages people have issues on because you can see the drop off, but you need to ask them. Whether it's picking up the phone or emailing them or running a survey like type form or anything like that, getting feedback is a key to improving because then you'll have a list of objections that you need to answer within your copy, within your product page, your checkout page, whatever it may be. Some objections could be like, ah, oh, what about, but wasn't sure. And there was no 30 day money back guarantee or free return policy. So th these are all objections that people may tell you. And if you get enough people saying it, those are the objections that you should focus on first answering throughout your funnel. And that's when you really see major lifts. Here's a question, Neil. I, I, so I, I've used a lot of these tools in the past that will record and then you can see what people are doing on the site, right? From personal experience, that hasn't really moved the needle for me. Um, what about you? If you look at the data and quantity, sure. If you look at recording by recording like one at a time, yeah. it's very rare that you see something that's going to drastically improve your numbers. Exactly. So I think, so what, I, what I'm getting at here is that when you're looking at like a data in aggregate, like a heat mapping tool, for example, so Neil used to have a tool called crazy egg. I think you still have it. If, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm not sure now. And then there's like tools like, you know, hot jar out there that will actually do that. And then actually you can record the screen. I've gotten value from the heat maps, but not so much the videos themselves. So your mileage may vary. I'm we're just kind of speaking from experience right here. Um, but anything else? The, the, the videos, the best purpose for them is actually support. So imagine someone complaining that they're having issues. You can then go watch a video recording to see where they're stuck and if you have bugs and to fix it. That's where the recordings are the most helpful. From a marketing standpoint, not as much, yeah. but from a, yes. a support and yeah. customer experience perspective, it helps a lot. Cool. So that is it for today. Next event where you want to come hang out with Neil and I, this is happening in 10 days. So you can still register. I, I'm not, I'm, we might be full by this time because as of this recording, we're actually looking pretty good. So levelingup.com slash founders. If you want to come hang out with Neil and I in Miami, February 12th to the 14th, we can watch the Super Bowl together. We can, I don't know, hang out. Um, I think we're going to, we're going to go play some, some, we're going to do some activities together as well. So that is it for today.